He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. I greet you all in the messless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God has approved us this time to come to him with all our burdens, with all our pains, to glorify him and to exalt his name. Because he is the God who is always good to us. He was good to us throughout the last week. Because of his grace, we could able to see this new week. Let us thank God for all his almighty blessings that he has showered upon us. Let us begin the service with a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we are thankful to you for all your almighty blessings that you have showered upon us, O oh Lord. We express our gratitude to you for your protection, providence and care for us throughout the last week. Father, we are weak and fragile people of this world. Many times we have strayed from your ways and we have followed the desires of our own hearts. But you are the Lord who never allows your children to go away from you, O Lord. Father God, as we have come to get your blessings through this service, Father, fill us with your spirit. As much time we are going to spend together, let your spirit guide in each and every activities of this day. Father God, also we pray for, the, for our believers, those who are sick. Lord, we pray for your grace over them. Lord God, stretch forth your healing hand upon them and heal them completely, O Lord. Father, we pray for today's speaker. Lord, anoint him with your Holy Spirit. And Lord, help him to speak the, your word which can be touched to the heart of all who have joined with us. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. We ask this prayer in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us glorify God by singing a chorus. Thanks. Give thanks. God loves cheerful giver. Jesus said, Freely you have received, freely give. Give so that you will be given. Let us offer our tithes and offerings through the account number scrolling on the screen. This is the time to intercede for various concerns. May I request Pastor Ajay Behera to lead us in intercessory prayer. Almighty our loving, living Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful evening. You have brought us together in different situations, different circumstances, in different places with one mind, one body, one spirit, to kneel before you and to pray. Lord, we thank you that you have added a new month in our life. Lord, the days that have passed by will never come. But the days ahead, Lord, we need your blessings, 
your anointing. Lord, we pray that in and through the days ahead of our life, in this month, Lord, carry us through. We pray for the spiritual renewal and the revival of the Synod of the Church of North India and the 27 dioceses, including our diocese, the pastorate, churches, and institution under the Synod. Lord, we pray for the spiritual renewal and revival of the churches and institution under the diocese of Katak. Lord, we pray for the churches that have been struggling these days due to the coronavirus. And the, we pray for the, those people, the pastors, the doctors, the nurses, the paramedical staffs, and the others who are working day and night to rescue, to serve the suffered people, Lord. Bless them, be with them, cover them with thy blood so that they will be safe and discharging their duty. Lord, we pray for the situation prevailing in the country due to pandemic. Lord, we pray that forgive our iniquities and trespasses, heal this land for your glory and extension of your kingdom. Lord, we pray for the president, the vice president, the prime minister, the member of the parliament, the member of the Rajya Sabha, the governors, chief ministers, and the member of legislative assembly of the states. Lord, bless them, guide them, so that they can work together with one mind, with your guidance, so that the country can be saved. People will be protected. Lord, we pray for our police forces, the military forces, those who are working across the border and the peace and security of the nation, Lord. Bless their families too. Lord, at this hour, we also pray for the judiciary. The lot of cases are pending. Lord, help them so that the justice will prevail in this country and your people will live peacefully in the land. And through this situation also, your gospel will be spread across the country. We pray for those who are celebrating their birthday during the last week and today. Lord, bless them, be with them, and bless them, guide them in and through the days ahead of their life. We also pray for those who have, who have celebrated their marriage anniversary. Lord, bless them, bless their wedded life and guide them so that the institution of family they have brought will use for your extension of your kingdom. We pray and commit this offering onto your mighty care which your children has brought through the online services to your storehouse. Bless it, multiply it, use it for your glory and extension of your kingdom. Lord, we commit the speaker of this evening, hide him behind your cross and speak to each one of us. Lord, we are at different places, but anoint us so that we'll be prayerfully listening to your word. Let it manifest in our life in the days to come. We ask this prayer in the Master's name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Scripture portion for today's meditation has been taken from Book of Jonah, chapter 4, verses 5 till 11. Jonah, chapter 4, verses 5 till 11. It is written like this. Jonah had gone out and sat down at a place east of city. There he made himself a shelter sat in its shade and waited to see what would happen to the city. Then the Lord God provided a leafy plant and made it grow up over Jonah to give shade for his head 
to ease his discomfort and Jonah was very happy about the plant but at dawn the next day god provided a worm which chewed the plant so that it withered when the sun rose god provided a scorching east wind and the sun blazed on jonah's head so that he grew faint he wanted to die and said it would be better for me to die than to live but god said to jonah is it right for you to be angry about the plant it is he said and i am so angry i wish i were dead but the lord said you have been concerned about this plant though you did not tend it or make it grow it sprang up overnight and died overnight and should i not have concern for the great city of nineveh in which there are more than a hundred and twenty thousand people who cannot tell their right hand from their left and also many animals may god add his blessings in reading and understanding of his word now may I request reverend sarup sampad nag the presbyter of our church to speak the word of god what god has led him to say this day I greet you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I take this as a privilege to share from the word of God. I thank God for this opportunity. Our God is a loving and caring God who loves and cares his people irrespective of who they are. Based on today's scripture portion that we have read, I have entitled my sermon as God's concern for the people to be saved god's concern for the people is to be saved before we go to the message shall we look to the lord and pray god we thank you so much for this opportunity that we are able to hear from your word hide me beside your cross father and speak to all of us very personally help us to know your love and lord your work in our life help us to obey you in all that we do in jesus precious name we pray amen the book of jonah is written after the principal character of the book that is prophet jonah the author of this book is uncertain and this particular book is a subversive story of a rebellious prophet who hates god for loving his enemies it is unique among other prophetical book of the old testament why because most of the prophetical book in the old testament starts from thus says the word of the lord saying it that these are the words that god is speaking but in this book we can find that the whole focus is centered around the story of uh, jonah now the question is who is jonah jonah was one among the prophets of god who lived before and during the time of jeroboam second one of israel's worst king and in second kings chapter 14 23 to 25 jonah prophesied in the favor of jeroboam second he said promising that he will win that means King Jeroboam will win a battle and reign all the territories of Israel's northern border. It is also important to notice that prophet Amos also confronted Jeroboam II in Amos chapter 6 verses from 13 to 14 and through him God specifically reversed Jonah's prophecy. promising that jeroboam will certainly lose all these territories because he is not according to the standard of god so before the story of jonah begins we are not even sure or there is some special suspicion about the character of jonah the story begins as we all know god addressed jonah and he commissions him to go to nineveh and preach against the evil and injustice of nineveh 
Nineveh was the capital city of the Assyrian Empire because God did not want anyone to perish. That's why this is a life example before us. Even in the Old Testament, though we say the Israelites were the people who were most favorable one, but God cares for the people beyond the territories of the Israel people. Even in today's context, all those who are claiming to be saved by God have the responsibility to proclaim the word of God to save the lives of the people. But uh, instead of going to the east of uh, Nineveh, Jonah went to the opposite direction, finding the ship going far west to Tarshish. Now the big question is, why did Jonah run? The first possible reason can be, was he afraid of the people staying in the city of Nineveh? Secondly, was he afraid that people's response will be against his life? Or thirdly, did not he like the Ninevites because of his previous experience? But this was not the reason. But the fact of the reality is that Assyrians were the bitter enemy of the Israelites who were attacking them time and again. If we read Jonah chapter 4 verse 2, Jonah says to God, For I know that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relenting from disaster. Because you knew that God is going to forgive the people of Nineveh if they truly confess their sin and repent before God. Jonah was expecting that God would bring his judgment, his condemnation, punishment, his, uh, or, or the punishment of death, destruction and justice for the city rather than bringing them hope, bringing them life and pardoning them from their sin. This, the bitterness about the city was rooted in his heart in such a way that he prayed to God that God please take my life from me and he says that it is good for me to die. It is good for me to die uh, because I don't want to see my enemy going prosper or forgiven by a living God. Therefore he tries to run from God and he boards a ship full of pagan sailors. He goes down into the ship and falls asleep. Under today's uh, theme, I would like to highlight four lessons that we can learn from the book of uh, Jonah, indeed from the life of uh, Jonah. The first thing that we can learn is uh, the result of disobedience. The result of disobedience always ends up with something which is not good. While Jonah was sleeping in the boat, God sends a huge storm to wake up his prophet. Very strangely, the sailors, those who were not aware of the God of Israel and those who were pagan, they were worried and they woke up and they knew that this thing that has happened, it has certainly the connection of divine intervention. It is divine power at work which is doing and because of that uh, there is disaster uh, for us and we are struggling. So they cast lots and discovered that Jonah is the culprit. So they asked Jonah to explain himself and now Jonah opens up his identity saying, I am a Hebrew. I fear the Lord, the God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. That means Jonah was aware that God is the God of whole creation and everything is controlled by him. The sea, the stars, the land or the, or the creature that is there. But even then, after knowing all these truths, Jonah was dumb enough to run on a boat. When the sailor asked Jonah, what shall we do? He replied, Kill me by throwing me from the boat. Initially, this may seem a kind gesture as we may think that Jonah was in a, a mood of saving the life of these uh, pagan sailors. 
but if we carefully observe that it is certainly his selfish mood because in order to avoid going to Nineveh, he was uh, thinking to uh, thinking it is good for him to die and he asked these uh, sailors to throw him into the sea. But the sailors were reluctant to do such act in the fear of the Lord and they repented to God even as they threw him from the boat. They said, O oh God, don't let his blood be on our hands. The storm sub and soon the storm subsides and they end up fearing the God of Israel. And unlike Jonah, they actually worshipped God. The pagan sailor, they obeyed God and they repented um, and paid their sacrifice. We can see here, here are the some people who are not aware of God, but seeing the sign and the symbols, they came to know it is certainly some powerful God who is working and they repented to God. Again, we see that the wind and the sea, they obeyed God's directions. Again, we see, if you read, continue to read the chapter 4, 2 and 3, then the fish who swallowed Jonah obeyed God and did not consume Jonah completely. The king of the city in chapter 3, all the Ninevites, including the cattle, repented before God. Where everyone is in a mood to obey God, Jonah did not pay heed to obey God. However, God did not allow Jonah's, Jonah's plan to succeed and he brings him back to the place where he has to fulfill the plan of God. The result of disobedience only brings affliction and disaster. But even then, God prepares ways to be saved. God never leaves his people in disaster, but he has a better plan for them to be saved. It was not only in the life of Jonah, but it is also in the life of all the believers. That when we do not obey God, sometimes he brings difficulties in our life to teach us a lesson. And thereby we can repent and we can turn back to him. The second lesson that we can learn, the first lesson is, there is a, always a result and consequences of not obeying God's word. The second lesson that we can learn is God teaches in his own way. God teaches in his own way. We all should always open enough to learn from God because his way of teaching is unique and he does the things in a very perfect way. As Jonah was thinking, God provides a strange watery tomb for him, the stomach of a large fish. Now, of course, under normal circumstances, this could be death. But here in this incident, everything was upside down. Why? Because it was completely the work of God. Jonah's submarine death becomes his passage back to life. This incident brings him closer to God. Crafted in the stomach of a beast, Jonah utters a prayer. But in this prayer also, he is not technically saying, Sorry Lord for what I have done. But indeed he is thanking God for not abandoning him and promises that he will obey God. From this point, God's response is quite comic here. The whale vomits back Jonah to the dry land again. Once again, God's commission, God commissions Jonah to go to preach to Nineveh. He says, go to Nineveh and preach what I tell you. And Jonah complies this time. The time of our affliction is a medium for God to humble us and teach us that we need him utterly. These days there are so many ministries or so many Christian institutions and organizations who are lacking of the finances, going through a lot of financial difficulties. And they, many do not, do not have their bank balance or sources of income too. But during this time, God is teaching us to look to him rather than looking on our own resources that is available. 
it is important for us during this time to obey him and to look to him alone for our assistance because if god brings affliction and if god brings uh, uh, situations in our life he has also a better way to come out of it the third lesson that we learn is god can use our minimum capacity to accomplish his greater task god can use our minimum capacity to accomplish his greater task it is told that nineveh was a giant city which will take days to walk through but jonah takes only one day to get into the city and preaches his message he says yet 40 days and nineveh shall be overthrown in hebrews it is only five words his sermon was very short because it was consisted of only five words and it was odd also there is no mention in his uh, message that uh, what the ninevite have gone have done wrong or uh, what are the things they should do to respond to god or it is not mentioned there that uh, who might overturn them again the the most important thing is uh, it is not mentioned uh, like about the name of god how god will bring disaster and uh, in between all these the question here is jonah either intentionally he has given a bare minimum information to the congregation or to the ninevites or it can be also possible that he has given a subort subortage or disrupt a form of the message a small portion of the message but whatever it may be only with those five words god has changed the life and the mind of uh, this uh, ninevites because as soon as jonah uttered these words uh, in the city of ninev that time the king in the of the city the all the ninevites all the uh, people in the city including their cattle they all of them they fasted and with the sorrow and ashes ashes they cried before the lord and they repented maybe jonah thought that if i speak a little bit of word then it may not work but when god works when god works he can use a minimum thing a small thing to accomplish his great task god can use the single stuff of moses to divide the red sea god can use the five small low, small stone to kill the giant goliath and again he can use the five loaves and two fishes to feed the 5000 and he can also use you and me to accomplish his task if we just obey him and if we just make ourselves available god can use us as a medium of transformation if we just say yes to his call the people in nineveh responded quickly to god's message and showed themselves more responsive than god's own prophet jonah god forgives the ninevites and he does not bring destruction on the city the last word of jonah uh, jonah's sermon was very short that he is overthrown a turn over means thrown over or something which has turned means um, jonah preached that on four, uh, in 40 days god is going to change turn or something it can mean two things for first thing is like god is going to overthrow thrown them to destruction like sodom and gomorrah but it can also mean that god is going to uh, tra- uh, transform or change the people of uh, uh, people of nineveh and this is true god brings changes though the intention behind jonah saying overthrown was something different and negative but that same word comes in a very positive uh, way and god changes uh, transforms the lives of this ninevite jonah's word came true but according to the plan of god the fourth point that i would like to highlight that we can learn the last point of today is god's plan is to save and not to destroy 
Jonah was uh, fuming mad and he uttered the second uh, prayer. He tells God why he ran away back because he knew that God is so merciful. Jonah quotes from Exodus chapter 34, 6 that um, he knew that God is compassionate and God is uh, forgiving people when they turn back to him. And therefore he says, Lord, you kill me. Lord, you kill me. I don't want to live with a God who loves and forgives his enemies or my, the, the enemies of uh, Jonah. Unfortunately, God did not obey while Jonah prayed. And Jonah in anger, and he was, God asked Jonah whether Jonah's anger is justified. Jonah ignores the city and he goes outside the, uh, outside the city to camp on the nearby hill waiting to see what might happen. The Ninevites might repent against their repentance and they may go back to their evil practices that they had before. What happens next is very odd because God provides a plan to teach something to Jonah. God plants a tree and he gives said to Jonah but after some time he also sends some worm to eat up the tree. And Jonah loses his shed and in the heat again he prays, God you kill me. And again God asks him, is it justified your anger is? Because in all these, God is helping him to understand that as you care and as you have emotional bonding uh, for a wine tree which was uh, for, for a temporary time, should not I care for the thousands of people, those who were about to die and perish in their sin? God asked to Jonah that is it not the life of the human beings are valuable and they also need God's favor. Finally, God is asking Jonah's permission to show favor to the people of Nineveh. But the point is not here that Jonah was not obedient or Jonah was uh, reluctant to hear to the message of God. The point is that the life of Jonah shows us that uh, are we ease, are we comfortable with the fact that God loves our enemies and he also can forgive them. It is a mirror, the book of Jonah and the story of Jonah is a mirror for all of us that we should look and know that uh, God is uh, there to show mercy to our enemies, even to our accusers, and we should always be ready uh, for that. We should, also hum we should also humble ourselves and show our gratitude that God has compassion for the people, those who are dying. This is a good news, again, because God has a wideness of mercy for irrespective of people, those who turn to him. Today we have learned lessons from God, that God is a God who requires, who wants our obedience. God is a God who, you, who can use his own way of doing things beyond our imagination. God is a God who can use minute thing, minimum thing that we have, and he can glorify that minimum thing. And the last but not the least is God's plan is always to build up, to carry and not to destroy. May God make each and every one of us as an instrument to build and save the life of people. God be with us. We are thankful to our speaker for this beautiful and wonderful word that he spoke to us this day. And I believe we all who have heard this message will follow it when we walk in this world. Thank you. May God bless you and use you more in the days to come. Gracious Heavenly Father, we are thankful to you for the word that came to us. Lord God, help us to keep those words in our heart and to follow it accordingly. Father, also we pray for your servant. You bless him. Use him more in the days to come, O oh Lord. Father God, we pray for 
all our brothers and sisters, those who are watching our service through YouTube. Lord God, bless all the families. Provide us whatever the needs and necessities of the, of the coming week, O oh Lord God. And let your grace be upon us throughout the week so that we can do the things which is acceptable to you, O oh Lord. Father God, also we pray for the sick people. Lord God, stretch forth your healing hand upon them and heal them completely, O oh Lord. We pray for good health of all our believers, Lord God. You bless everybody. And Lord, be with all of us. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. We ask this prayer in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the love of God the Father, grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, fellowship and presence of the Holy Spirit be with all of you from now and forever. Amen. The service ends here. Go in peace and serve the Lord. May God bless you all.